That German submarine, now manned by a British crew, was captured in one of the surprise episodes of the war. A Hudson bomber spotted the U-boat on the surface and attacked it with gunfire. With depth bombs from the plane also threatening, the submarine surrendered. The undersea raider is taken to England and is received with cheers, a claim for a dramatic exploit of the war at sea. The U-boat was one of the most feared weapons ever deployed by the Germans. These notorious submarines would cause much destruction and devastation during both the First World War and the Second World War. In fact, Winston Churchill once wrote that the only thing that really frightened me during the war was the U-boat peril. During the Second World War, Germany built over 1,100 U-boats, of which 785 were destroyed and the remainder would surrender or were scuttled. However, today, we're going to look at the remarkable story of the aircraft that captured a U-boat single-handedly, and more specifically captured U-570. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. U-boat U-570 was built to the German Type 7C design. This was the most common Second World War U-boat type built by the Germans, and it had a displacement of 769 tonnes when it would surface, and 871 tonnes when it was submerged. Now the U-boats were a constant fear in the back of the minds of Allied sailors or seafarers during the conflict, and they would target different types of ships, and hopefully disrupt supplies reaching Allied countries as much as possible, as well as focusing on military targets. U-570 was over 67 metres long, and the diesel propulsion system provided a maximum speed of 18.8 .8 knots, or just over 21 miles per hour when surfaced, or 7.6 knots, or just under 9 miles per hour when submerged. This specific vessel had a fuel capacity of 109 long tonnes, which gave it a range of 7,500 nautical miles, or 8,600 miles, at 10 knots or 12 mile an hour. The test depth in which it could operate in was 230 metres underwater. Its main armament was made up of 53.3 cm torpedo tubes. U-570 could carry 14 torpedoes overall, and was fitted with an 8.8mm deck gun with around 150 rounds of ammunition, and a 20mm Flak 30 anti-aircraft gun. Shipbuilding firm Blomann Voss laid down U-570 at Hamburg on the 21st of May 1940, and it was launched under a year later on the 20th of March 1941. It was commissioned into the Kriegsmarine or German Navy on the 15th of May 1941. Following a short series of tests and commission trips in the Baltic, U-570 moved to Norway, where she carried out short training voyages and fired practice torpedoes checking the weapons system on board. In late July 1941, the submarine had moved to the German U-boat base of Lofshord, around 13 kilometers north of Trondheim. In August 1941, the German naval co-breaking organization learned of a large concentration of Allied merchant ships in the region of the North Atlantic Sea, south of Iceland. Admiral Karl Dernitz ordered 16 U-boats to the area to hunt down the Allied vessels, and U-570 would be one of these. On the morning of the 24th of August, she would be placed on her first wartime patrol. The planned mission was to patrol the area south of Iceland, before proceeding to the U-boat base at La Palace in France, and U-570 on board carried enough supplies for around four weeks at sea, estimating a long mission. At the helm of the ship and commanding U-570, was Captain Lieutenant Hans Joachim Ramlow. Ramlow was an experienced naval officer who had only recently been transferred to command U-boats, previously having been a gunnery and coastal defence specialist. He had commanded training submarine U-58, but had carried out no war patrols, so in this role he was rather inexperienced. Also, the first watch officer, his second in command, had only served a few months with the U-boats, previously serving on destroyers, and other crew members also had little experience. The engineer was the only officer on board who had served on a U-boat war patrol, but the petty officers had more experience within themselves on U-boats. The inexperienced crew on U-570 wasn't unique at this time in the war, and many of the staff who had been captured on other U-boats would admit that they were on their first war patrols. On the 27th of August 1941, U-570 spent much of the morning submerged. She had been at sea for four days, and a number of the crew had been suffering quite seriously with seasickness, and others had been incapacitated with this. The sea had been rather rough, and it wasn't doing anyone any good. In fact, some of the crew were completely bedridden. Frustrated and wanting some respite, Ramlo, the commander of the vessel, 
ordered the submarine to go close to the surface, which was against regulations and also against everything he'd been told to do in training. U-570 surfaced at around 10.50am in very clear water and was clearly visible from the air. Earlier, British Sergeant Leslie Baffy Mitchell of the 269 Squadron spotted the vessel and attempted to throw depth charges from his Lockheed Hudson. However, his bomb racks jammed and the explosives wouldn't release. Extremely annoyed with this, he called out the U-boat's position, dropped smoke markers and left it for another Hudson. Importantly, Captain Ramlow of the vessel was not aware that he had been spotted. When the vessel surfaced, U-570 found itself immediately below a second Lockheed Hudson bomber from 269 Squadron, flown by Squadron Leader James Thompson. Thompson had been patrolling the area that was earlier marked by Mitchell, who had summoned him by radio. Once he got over the shock of the U-boat submerging directly below him, Thompson made a beeline towards the submarine. At this point, Captain Ramlow stepped onto the bridge of the vessel, and he heard the plane's engines through the hull of the submarine. He immediately ordered the U-boat to crash dive into the sea. However, Squadron Leader Thompson's Hudson had already reached the ship, and he dropped four 250-pound depth charges around the ship, with one detonating just 10 metres from the boat. The U-boat was in dire peril, and one aircraft was about to make a heroic and amazing capture. This time, the mechanism didn't jam, and the depth charges hit the water at an angle of 30 degrees to the vessel's rear. The depth charge that landed around 10 metres away caused a huge amount of damage. The crew members would recount that the explosion from this almost rolled the ship over, and the crew believed that there was a contamination on board, with chlorine possibly spilling into the ship, caused by acid from leaking battery cells. This caused a huge panic on board, and the lights failed, plunging the submarine into darkness. The fear of being gassed inside the U-boat caused a huge panic, and the boat resurfaced with around 10 of the crew emerging from the vessel, displaying a white sheet to surrender. Thompson did open his machine guns up on the vessel, however upon the display of surrender, he immediately stopped. Most of the crew remained on the deck of the submarine, with Thompson's Hudson circling above them, and he was now joined by a second Hudson to lend assistance. A radio request for help saw a Catalina flying boat being scrambled and this would reach the scene three hours later. The German crew at this time informed the German naval high command of the issue, destroyed their radio, smashed their Enigma machine, and dumped its parts overboard along with secret papers. Admiral Dernitz would later order other U-boats to go to the area to help U-570, but Allied air patrols prevented ships helping the stricken vessel. Its transmission via radio was intercepted, and more Allied ships were ordered to the scene. The Catalina would watch the submarine until the Allied vessels arrived, and if none arrived before sunset, the aircraft was to warn the U-boat's crew to go into the water, and it would then have sunk the U-boat. The first vessel reached U-570 around 10pm, and the Catalina would then return to Iceland, having circled the U-boat for around 13 hours. James Thompson in his Lockheed Hudson had managed to single-handedly force the surrender of a U-boat, one of the ships that Churchill genuinely feared. The German crew remained on board U-570 all evening, making no attempt to scuttle the vessel, as an anti-submarine vessel, HMT Northern Chief, had arrived and threatened to open fire and not rescue survivors if they did this. More Allied vessels overnight would reach the scene, and confusion came when a Norwegian small float plane attacked the U-boat with small bombs and fired upon Northern Chief. Luckily, no damage was done and the aircraft was ordered away. The next day, the weather worsened and several attempts to attach a tow line to U-570 were unsuccessful, but believing the German crew to be uncooperative, the Royal Navy destroyer, HMS Burwell, fired some warning shots, accidentally wounding five of the German crew. Following the tow line finally being attached, the crew of U-570 were taken on board HMCS Niagara. They arrived on the 29th of August in Iceland, where they beached the U-boat as they had been taken on water, and they thought she would be in danger of sinking. Following the U-boat's arrival, engineers would study the submarine, and would learn a great deal about U-boats from U-570. During the panic, the instruments on board had only been partially broken, so these were of great value for the British engineers, who would obtain more information about the ships. Information and text linked to the Enigma code would also be found, and U-570 spent three weeks being repaired and taking part in short sea trials to test the engines and steering. On the 29th of September, the submarine set out for the UK, manned by a Royal Navy prize crew. 
it arrived in Barrow and Furness, and its capture would be used in British propaganda. Apart from Commander Ramlow, U-570's officers were all taken to an officer's prisoner of war camp at Greasdale Hall in Cumbria. At this camp a large amount of crew from sunken U-boats were based, and a court of honour was established that tried Ramlow and the crew, including his second in command, Bernhard Berndt. Berndt was guilty of cowardice along with Ramlow, who wasn't there, and Berndt would later escape the camp, being shot by the home guard, who would later apprehend him. Interestingly, following its capture and repair, U-570 was placed into service with the Royal Navy, becoming HMS Graf, in September 1941. It would later have a rather interesting service history, however that's a story for a different video. So U-570 eventually became an important symbol of British naval superiority, however you cannot forget the actions of squadron leader James Thompson and his Lockheed Hudson bomber. Without his role in capturing the remarkably feared naval submarine, then U-570 could have gone on to conduct extreme damage against Allied merchant ships. Thompson's actions were incredibly heroic, under deep pressure and panic, however you can't also forget about how poorly trained the crew of U-570 were, and how the officers weren't really experienced on this type of vessel. The story of squadron leader James Thompson however, and his Lockheed Hudson bomber that single-handedly captured a U-boat is definitely a story worth telling. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching.